Yes, we are back as we promised you. Last week we discussed about koinonia, joyful or revolved. Mm. And last week we saw the joyful, exciting reasons, the blessings that are there in going to fellowship with God. Amen. But can you imagine some people do actually rebuff you, they rebuff the Lord before when they were invited to come to the house of the Lord. Mm. So we want to look at that today. Last week we saw the joyful, the blessings that is accepting to Amen. be in the house of the Lord. Amen. But strangely, some people still have reasons to rebuff. So we want to look at that aspect of the Koinonia today. And our text is from Luke chapter 14, 16 to 24. And we'll be reading from the CEV translation. Yes. Jesus replied with this parable. A man invited many to join him in a great feast. When the day for the feast arrived, the host instructed his servant to notify all the invited guests and tell them, Come, for everything is now ready for you. But one by one, they all made excuses. One said, I cannot come. I just bought some property and I have to go and look it over. Another said, Please accept my regrets, for I just purchased five teams of oxen and I need to make sure they can pull the plow. Another one said, I cannot come because I just got married. The servant reported back to the host and told him all their excuses. The master became very angry and said to his servant, go at once throughout the city and invite anyone you find, the poor, the blind, the disabled, the haughty, and the lonely. Invite them to my banquet. When the servant returned to his master, he said, sir, I have done what you asked me, but there is still room for more. So the master told him, All right, go out again. And this time, bring them all back with you. Persuade the beggars on the street, the outcasts, even the homeless, insist that they come in and enjoy the feast so that my house will be full. I say to you all, no one who receives an invitation to feast with me and make excuses will ever enjoy my banquet. Mm. So again, we ask you, Koinonia, is it joyful invitation to you or you rebuff the invitation? My love, let's share with our viewers this side of them rebuffing and the consequences of rebuffing and why excuses that people give in rebuffing the invitation to come to the presence of God. Amen. 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 It's a privilege to continue this series on Koinonia Joyful or Rebuffed. Like my husband said, we read about the joyful aspect. Please listen to the message from last week. It's awesome as exemplified through the uh, life of David and his documentation in Psalm 122 verses 1 to 5 of excitement and joy and the benefits of koinonia, of fellowship with God and with one another. Amen. Amen. How thrones, how destinies are established, how your king, kingdom in Christ and your domain of rulership is established in you, how, how you progress and make leaps, great leaps and, uh, uh, leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, some rebuff. Mm -hmm. There is always two sides to the coin. Mm -hmm. So let's look quickly at Luke chapter 14. 16 to 24 that was read by my husband it says jesus told him a man 
once gave a great banquet. This man is exemplifying God. God, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There's a great banquet and he invited a lot of guests. When the banquet was ready, he sent a servant to tell the guests, everything is ready. Please come. The great invitation. Hallelujah. Amen. This shows us that your pass is guaranteed. You have been invited. You will not be turned back. Once you come with the invitation with which you have been invited, you have been invited through the price that has been paid by the Son, Christ Jesus. When we accept Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Savior, we accept the invitation. And then he says, with the invitation comes the laggies, comes the, 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 the uh, extras, the advantages, the blessings, the increases. And he says, with that, there is a banquet. What is a banquet? A banquet, I would say, is something that tells of all your favorite sumptuous meals, expensive, exotic, all continent represented meals. Amen. With drinks to match, decorations to match, music to suit. In essence, the answer to all your life needs are present, says the Lord. Amen. With this invitation, you will lack nothing. He said, even what you think you lost, you will gain, not only in this world, but in the world to come a hundredfold. Amen. What a promise. Hmm. So, the servant that the Lord sent to go and give this invitation, here we see what he says. He says the first person he met said, Oh, I bought some land and I've got to look it over. Please excuse me, he said. <laughs> the second said, I bought five teams of oxen and I need to try them out. Please excuse me, he said. <laughs> Still, another guest said, I just married the Miss World. You know you cannot keep Miss World waiting. Said, I can't be there. <laughs> oh, the servant went back to the master and the master became so angry. He said, Go as fast as you can to every street and you know the story. It has already been read to us. And then finally the master said, after every person who were not qualified originally, who were not thought to have qualified to make the list of invitees, were brought in. The, the master said, not one of the guests I first invited will get even a bite of my food. How sad. How sad. Now, as seen in Luke 14, men in today's world would rather focus on and brag on their businesses, their mansions, the size and numbers of their aircrafts, and you name it the gorgeous beauty of their spouses or the handsomeness and the tall farm muscles of their male spouses. Mm -hmm. However, their relationship with God does not count. This is not how it was from the beginning. The Bible said in the beginning it was not so. Mm -hmm. Samuel boasted thus. He said, God spoke with me last night. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the people are found that Samuel's word never fell to the ground. Meaning that whatsoever he said God told him, uh, it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. Elijah boasted on his relationship with God. 
and he demonstrated it by the fire fall. Hmm. People that have lived in generations close to us, like William Seymour of Azusa, we could see the manifestations of healing miracles that there was there was a second it was a second to none miracles that till today need to be matched growth totally disappearing arms growing in the presence of people and coming out many many things that the Lord did to a man that dared to joyfully experience koinonia with him. God mingling with man in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Charles Finney with the orphanage who would sit hundreds of children down with no food because it was during the recession time and would pray in their presence to God and say, watch the God we serve manifest, for he is a provider, Jehovah. And before they finish praying, there will be a knock on the door, that same door where they sat, and there will be lots and lots of food delivered, fresh, that these children will not be able to finish eating. <laughs> Amen. Catherine Coma, and with our relationship with the Holy Spirit and healing miracles that we still talk about today. Billy Graham, with the message of salvation, simple evangelical message of salvation, yet powerful, that has brought millions to Christ. Many others in our days today, mighty men of God that have exemplified church growth, that have shown the power of God, the love of God, they are here today, you know them. Yet all these men and women also had great testimonies of their needs being met and being exceptionally wealthy too. Hmm. When we walk with God through the Holy Spirit and live for Him, as said in Matthew 6 verse 33, all these things for which those people in that passage gave excuses, I bought a land. Eh? My business has just started. Ah, I expanded my business. I bought five teams of, of of oxen. I want to try them out. Yeah. Now I have found my partner, my spouse. I can't come. Who gave you the partner? Who gave you the business? Who established you in that land? Hmm. Don't put the cart before the horse. That always leads to a wobbly fall. I see. Don't put the cat before the horse. It will always lead to a wobbly fall. Don't put the blessing before the giver of it. Don't let your blessing be an hindrance to your progress in God. Mm. The worst enemy of best mm. is good. <laughs> Everything of the excuses that these people made not to be able to make it to the banquet mm. that was prepared by the master, mm. notice that they were all legitimate. Mm. They were not bad. Mm. It wasn't that they were about to go rob a bank mm. or they were about to go slander somebody or kill another fellow. Mm. They were all good excuses in court, mm. but the enemy of the best is the good. Hmm. So, we must seek not to only do the good will, but the perfect will of God. Our prayer then is, let's look at Psalm 119, verses 129 to 130 in TPT. 
Your marvelous words are living miracles. No wonder I long to obey everything you say. That is the secret. When you know and understand the word of God, when you know the promises, when you know he in whom you have believed, when you know this God that we are talking about, and what is there for you in his presence that he has already prepared for you. Ah. In fact, like David, <laughs> we will read that, uh, like David, I think we mentioned that last week. He said, while standing, he hasn't entered, while standing before the gates of the house of the Lord, I would rather stand there and spend, uh, than, and stand there one day in the presence of the Lord than spend a thousand days in the palace of the wicked. Because he knows this God and he knows what he gets from his presence. Hmm. He says, your marvelous words are living miracles. No wonder I long to obey everything you say. So when God calls, I say, I'm saying, speaking now. When God calls, drop all else and follow him. Amen. Don't be like those people that were depicted in Luke chapter 14. Drop those good things. Go get the perfect things. Amen. Break open, David said, your word within me until revelation light shines out those with open hearts that is those who can release what is in their hands can get better things those with open hearts are given insight into your plans like we read last week in psalm 122 yes. verse 5 that is where the thrones of kings are established when you have open heart, hearts and you have the revelation light that brings you understanding of the ways and the plans of God, your throne will be established in his presence. The same David said in Psalm, the same Psalm 119, but now verses 73 to, to 74 and verse 79, so three verses. He says, your very hands have held me and made me who I am. Give me more revelation light so I may learn to please you more. May all your devoted lovers see how you treat me and be glad. Amen. Amen. For your words are entwined in my heart. Now, take note, verse 79. May all your devoted lovers follow me as I follow the path of your instructions. See, he says, may the devoted ones, the people, your fellow Christians, the one you meet together, mingle together with God in the place of koinonia, in the place of spiritual fellowship. May they see the good things that God has done in your life and they will be glad. They will say, yes, we know God can do this. And if God did this for him, he would do it for me too. Amen. He's no respecter of persons. May you be a visible display, an advertisement of his power. Amen. David said also in verse 79, he said, May all your devoted lovers follow me as I follow the path of your instructions. Amen. We like people to follow us on Facebook or like us. We want them to like or follow us on Instagram. Twitter, which other one is there, and many more. You know the secret? You follow the instructions of God. Amen. Many will follow you. You want church growth? You follow the instructions of God. Amen. Many will follow you. Amen. You want power? You want demonstration of His love, power, grace, kindness? You want people to, to acknowledge the God in you? Follow the instructions of God. Mingle with God. Have koinonia. Amen. 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 And so, again, we commit you to the hands of God and that the grace to choose joyfully to be in His presence will always be your choice. Amen. Don't be limited by the little blessings that you receive now. Many more are there. You would establish 
your God given dominion platforms. Amen. So it's always better not to rebuff him, mm-hmm. but to be joyfully mingle with God. Amen. And you will see his manifestations in your life. Amen. 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 Father, again, we thank you for our viewers. We pray that they will make good choices Amen. that will draw them closer to you. Amen. And you will make them visible display of your manifestation Amen. to this world in Jesus' name. Amen. That from generation to generation, you give them legacies that they will bequeath even to this path that we are currently in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Again, it's been a, a privilege Amen. to empower you to, to fulfill, fulfill your, your God-given God destiny. destiny. Amen.